Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at this record. It was one that was requested. It is um, Oasis's debut album, Definitely Maybe. So this album review was requested by user um, Aaron Anderson. So thank you very, so thank you very much for requesting this review. So this was Oasis's debut album, released on the 29th of August in 1994. The band was originally formed in 1991 and like, consisted of Liam Gallagher, Paul Bonehead Arthurs, Paul McGregor and Tony McCarroll um, and like Noel Gallagher like Liam's brother like was originally asked like to manage the band however Noel insisted that like he join the group and like make like them great like he like saw potential like in potential like in like the band equivalent like, however didn't have like sort of like a songwriter like among them like so Noel like basically like brought the songs like brought like his like fantastic like guitar play playing like to the mix and like it was ultimately like what made like Oasis. So they signed to Creation Records in 1993 and a promo single for song Columbia was issued. Um, and like surprisingly like Radio 1 like unexpectedly like picked up like on like the song and like interest like grew very very quickly like for like the band. So the recording sessions for this album um, initially took place at Rockfield Studios in Wales with producer Dave Batchelor. However, the bands were unsatisfied like with like the results like, from these sessions, like saying that like he like saying that like he like was too polished, like so like made like made that like, the recordings too clean. It wasn't like so like as rough like as like they wanted it to be. So after a short tour, they actually restarted the album at Sawmill Studios in Cornwall with Mark Coyle producing. This gave the group a live, loud and tough sound like which like they sought. And like they recorded like as like a band like um like as like a band like live playing together before Noel like would like go on and like do like his many guitar overdubs. The album was then mixed by their live sound engineer um Owen Morrison, like who like I said like done like the sound for like all like their live concerts. So he knew like sort of, like the like um, so he knew like the sounds like which like the fans loved and like which like the band like were like going for. So he mixed it at um Johnny Marr's studio, like employing like many techniques like in like production like which like he'd learned like from like producing like Johnny Mars band Electronic. These techniques I like, saw sort of, like aimed to make like the very sort of like rough and ready live recordings like a lot more tighter and like and like also make the performances sound like a little bit more like advanced advanced like, than like they actually were. So when the album was released, it was a immediate critical and commercial success. It was very well received, like for how well basically optimistic and like youthful like it sounded. Like this was like a time like when like American grunge music like sort of like ruled like the like alternative music scene. So something like this, like sort of like with very sort of like um sort of like positive, so like um quite sort of upbeat, like sort of like optimistic like lyrical content, like was very refreshing like for the time. And like I said, it was a immediate hit album, and um, like after like their preview singles from this, I think that like, there were three singles released before the album came out. Those like all performed like progressively better. And like this album, like when it was when it was released, like it became the fastest selling debut album of all time, being certified seven times platinum. And like even like in like America, like although it only charted like at like a measly fifty eight, like it still like managed to sell like over like a million copies like there like over like a sustained period of time. In the years since its release, like it continues to be um, a highly regarded album, like often placed on like all time best off lists. So I will just now show you my vinyl copy. This is a um, reissued copy, although I believe like the original ones are pretty much identical like, in terms like of like packaging. So brilliant cover, very iconic photo there, um, and then the back cover is very nice as well. You get a nice gatefold to this one, so just a, another picture like off like the band or like this sort of turntable. And then I think I'll just get out one of the records. There's no fancy like in the sleeves of this. They're both just in sort of paper sleeves and on this sort of white Big Brother records label. So that's uh, the vinyl there, definitely maybe. This is a very, very thick vinyl. I think 200 grams it almost feels like here. So yeah, like these reissues, like a really fantastic quality. So I will now go over each of the album songs in detail. I will score each check out a 10 and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. So we open up with the classic rock and roll star, which is a brilliant way to kick off the album. I just love like sort of like the introduction, like with sort of like that sort of like that slide guitar sort of thing like going on. 
I like them, the drums kick in, it's just such a euphoric um, song really, like lyrically it is, it can be taken as sort of like Oasis' sort of like mission statement, like it's a swagger, swagger and rocker like about being like on stage and like sort of like in control like of like a crowd, like but also sort of like wanted to, wanted to escape like the boredom like of like normal life. Like, so like again it has this very sort of like aspirational like, sort of like lyric to it also the band do a really fantastic performance you just got a lot of attitude like a lot of like energy like on this one so yeah an easy 10 out of 10 there rock and roll stop absolute classic song <laughs> So the second track up is Shaker Maker, which was the band's second single, and I mean, this isn't like a fan favourite like this one here, like I mean, um, a lot of people like to say like it's a little bit, like sort of like th throw away this track, and um, kind of like a rip off like of an old folk song called I Like To Teach The World To Sing. I like the I like I like the lyrics like I said a bit more throwaway a little bit more like obscure um like almost like sort of like psychedelic like sort of like um style like to like the lyrics on this one but they're not completely devoid like of like meaning like apparently like the shaker maker like was like a type of like toy like which like they like grew up with like in like their seventies childhood um and like also mentions um Mr Sifter sold me songs and I and like Sif and Sifter's like is a record shop which is still there. Like, like in like the town like off Burnage like where like they grew up. So this is one of so this was like as I said their second uh, single and like the first major chart hit and um, hitting number eleven in June of 1994. So a pretty solid song there. Like I mean like I quite like it. Like a quite like the middle eight like especially that like, where like sort of like it goes down like a different road like for like a little while. Um like but yeah not one off the standout moments like on the album however. And then we get the classic Live Forever, which I must say, for me personally, I think is a little bit overrated, but I still can't give it like any less than a 10 out of 10, because this is an absolute classic. Probably, like I would say, o I would say it's maybe Oasis's um, like second or third like most like popular song, probably like after Wonderwall and um, Don't Look Back in Anger. Like this is like another one like off at them, sort of like um, absolutely classic, timeless songs, like which like they made like around this time. Um, I mean, you've got, like um great lyrics like on it quite so like optimistic like again very much the opposite like off like the grunge scene that what like came before them like apparently like when like Noel like presented this song like to like the band like sometime in 1993 like they didn't believe that he had just wrote it they were like no way like that's like too good for you like whoever like it was like um no Gallagher no Gallagher just showing like what a brilliant brilliant talent like he was this was I think the third single from the album and like it was quite successful like on like both sides like off the Atlantic and um, I, I mean personally though I think um structurally the song it does kind of like go go like in circles like a little bit like it sort of like repeats itself guys like it goes on like a little bit and um, that like, I mean like maybe like a middle eight like or something like could have like kept the song like a bit more interesting but um, really though still like a 10 out of 10 Jack like just because like off like the huge like impact like impact and um, like what the song had And then opening up to the second side, we get Up In The Sky, which is a real rocker like off a song. We get um, a really great guitar riff to open it. Again, again, you've got a really lovely structure to it, like so like it doesn't get boring. And like lyrically, like it's a bit more sort of like biting this track, like a sort of like a class based like sort of song, like quite sort of angry, like and spiteful, like sort of like towards like sort of like the upper classes and that. Music is just really rocking, like Liam does a brilliant vocal on it. So yeah, we'll give it a um, 9 out of 10 for Up in the sky another wonderful song and then the next one is one of my least favorite ones i call the album personally it's columbia which is one which a lot of fans seem to really really love However, for me, I just think it kind of meanders on a little bit too long. Um, I mean, I mean, it starts off pretty good. We've got like this sort of like this good sort of solid drum beat, like which was apparently created by by like applying a echo like to like McCall's drums because apparently like he like couldn't play the drums very well. Like so, like this track here, like um, engineer Morris, like sort of like apply uh, apply this sort of like echo echo like to give the song like its very distinctive like introduction. 
I quite like the chorus like on it, but as I said, it goes on for too long. It's far too repetitive, this track here. I mean, this one maybe would, maybe was influenced by like some of like, the loop bass, like dance music, like or of like a few years previous, like thinking of stuff like Fool's Gold, like by like the Stone Roses. Like well, personally, I just get a bit sick like of the song, like after like about like two or three minutes. So yeah, like Columbia would get a seven out of 10. Sing a sad song in a lonely place. Now, closing off the third side is um, the LP bonus song, which is Sad Song, which wasn't on original CDs for some reason, like whatever, like it was on um, like all vinyl versions of the album, that, so I will be including it like in this review. Because I really, really like the song, it is, it is very it is very much like a change of pace like, for like, the album, that like, you could like, sort of say like it do almost doesn't belong like on the album. Basically, like it's um, a Noel Gallagher like solo, like acoustic song. I mean, the song itself like is like, like, quite nice. I mean, he wrote sort of like better like acoustic songs and like stuff like Half the World Away and like uh, Cast No Shadow. Like those ones, like I think like are slightly stronger. And um, and like also vocally, like as well. Like he was still like sort of like finding himself like as like a singer like around this time. Like, so like so as uh, so a sort of like slightly sort of shaky, like sort of like unconfident, like sort of like vocal like on it. Um, like however, I, I do think that like, the very like sort of like primitive sound it is just no like and like a like acoustic. Like they really help like give the song song like some character. So I will give it like a nine out of ten for sad song. Um, a really really like good track there. But Open up the next side with Supersonic, which is a wonderful song. This is a really powerful track. You've got great sort of like powerful drumming on it, like a really like fantastic groove to it. Lyrically, once again, it maybe doesn't mean too much. Like whether like you've got an absolute banger like off like off like a performance like on it. And like what's more remarkable is that this song was written and recorded like all like in one day. Like I believe that they were um, in rehearsals to record. I think the song "Bring It On Down." Like whether like that wasn't quite working like working like so they started like jamming out this song like and, like at like a break like in like the sessions like Noel like wrote out the lyrics. So just like a really sort of like incredible work. Crate, like which like they were like bound to like around like this time of and this was also notably the band's debut single um which which initially ch only tried at i think number 38 like on like the national charts like whether the song has go has gone on to be come like a like oasis classic and it's probably my personal favorite song like on this album Now next up is another one of my least favourites on the album is Bring It On Down, which is one of the more sort of punky like influence songs I wish that they'd done. Like with sort of like lyrics that like, sort of like referencing like the underclass and like sort of like being like out of work. Personally, I think they maybe should have swapped the song out like with like the similarly punky um, B-side, Fade Away, which I think has a lot better lyrics, like a lot less sort of like instrumental like music link like on it. Um, lag and certainly that would have been another 10 out of 10 song there for the album as it is bring it on down would get a 7 out of 10 just not a song which i've really like connected with personally But the next one though is another undisputed classic, it is Cigarettes and Alcohol, which is, yeah, a classic song. Lyrically, this one is a bit more meaningful, like it's about basically like not having much like in like your life and like basically just like living like for like a good time. Musically, it is slightly sort of like, um, it's got this sort of like, sort of 70s like glam rock like feel to it. It slightly rips off the song like Get It On like by T-Rex, like whatever, like otherwise a really sort of like tough like Oasis classic was I think the fourth single from the album and that was the and that was like the highest charted one like off like the lot like reaching number seven. Um like so yeah um, a wonderful song there um, an easy ten out of ten for me. Now the next one up is Diggs's Dinner, which is a song which I think a lot of fans like really seem to dislike. However, I really like it. I think it is quite a silly song, but there's nothing really bad about it, like I have to say. I mean like lyrically it's kind of it's kind of got sort of like a double kind of meaning. Like sort of like could be sort of like you're sort of sort of like reminiscing like about like school days like going around to like a friend's house like for tea. Like whether like it sort of like also has like these sort of like sexual like sort of like undertones, like 
could give you strawberries and cream and your friends will all go green for my lasagna or sort of like, well, like the lines in it and that but it's just a short really sort of sweet song like you've got like this really nice like keyboard solo just keeps it really fresh like really like uplifting and like i said it's about two and a half minutes this one here just like a perfect like little pop song there so digs is dinner a nine out of ten for me now that's your mind. And the penultimate one is another classic, Slide Away, which is quite a unique song for this album because it lyrically is a love song and like a very, very good one at that. Basically just about like wanting like to be alone like with like this person and like sort of like forgetting about the outside world. Like no wrote it like on like a guitar like apparently given to him by Johnny Marr. I believe it was the Red Les Paul like Marr had used on the Queen Is Dead album. And like Noel said that this song pretty much just like wrote itself like when like he had like this guitar. So a sort of like effort, eff effortless song to write like by like his account and, and like really one like which like you can tell is just it just flows so well. Like the solo on it is just incredible. Um yeah, like they all pull in their weight, so fantastic like as a band. Um an easy ten out of ten for slide away. There's no need for you to say you're sorry. And then we finish the album with Married With Children, which is a song which I think is really underrated like on the album. I would give it a 10 out of 10 because I just love it like as an album closer. Lyrically, I think it's just really funny, like really down to earth, like about basically like the like mundane nature like of like family life and and like how like the singer like isn't getting on like with like his wife. He sings like your music shite, it keeps me up all night. Um, like I mean, like it's very much like the complete opposite like of like rock and roll style. Like it's just a sort of like simple like acoustic track. Liam does a really bit really sort of beautiful, like very sort of like soft, softly sung like vocal like on it. Um, and 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 like and like I think just like sort of like brings us like down like down like sort of like back to earth like after like the sort of like um, epic like slide away this one like just puts everything like sort of like back like into like reality. So yeah, we we'll get a ten out of ten. Married with children, wonderful song. So overall, this album scores 91%. So this is an absolutely classic debut album. I mean, I think it succeeds for many reasons. I think not only that like, the songwriting like is really great. I like, know Gallagher basically like, right out the gates like is already um, a very well accomplished like songwriter. Songwriter like he writes some great melodies. Like some like sort of like great lyrics, like I mean like they're not always sort of like the most meaningful, like whoever like um they are still like I think like I think like quite creatively done. And like also this album has a very sort of like consistent production. And and it's also interesting as well as well that this is the only Oasis album entirely sung like by Liam, like apart like from like the bonus song um, Sad Song, which gives the album a real sort of like sense like of focus, like a real sort of sense like of like this sort of like um it's like a mission statement that like this album here, like they're really wanting to try and like make an impact with this, which they like um, without a shadow of a doubt, they definitely made an impact with this album. I think this is probably their best album, I would say. I think it's more consistent overall than what's the story Morning Glory. Like even though like if like you do remember like my like review of that one, I think I gave that 95%, but looking back on that I definitely like overrated like that album like quite a bit but this one like at 91% I think it definitely deserves a score like in like that realm because it is just a really really classic album one of the best like of like um, all time like I would say so yeah, that's been my review of Oasis definitely maybe I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you all next time for the next video goodbye Even though you know